Over the weekend, our new Twitter boss, Elon Musk, tweeted some stock picking advice. He said, buy stocks in several companies that make products and services you believe in. Only sell if you think their products and services are trending worse. Don't panic when the market does, and this will serve you well in the long term. Well, if you think that sounds like something Warren Buffett might say, you're right. Those two clearly, they don't agree on the value of cryptocurrencies, but Elon's stock strategy is pretty close to what Warren Buffett has been saying for years. Don't panic when the market does. Sounds a lot like Buffett famously saying, be greedy when others are fearful and fear... Is that what, did I say that right? Be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. And Elon and Warren, they, they both say to buy companies that you believe in. A decade ago, Buffett said that the one, best, one of the best ways to protect yourself against inflation is to own part of a wonderful business. By the way, Warren Buffett is on a huge buying spree, the, the biggest buying spree in a decade right now. He is going even bigger into companies like Chevron and Activision and Apple. All in, last quarter, he bought more than $40 billion of stock. So let's all think like billionaires today and try to invest like billionaires too. Today on Dumb Money, we are picking recession-proof stocks that can beat inflation. We are Dumb Money. Three friends who turn $30,000 into $30 million using nothing more than Twitter and a zero commission trading account. The suits that work on Wall Street, they call those people the smart money. That's not us. Our goal is to help level the playing field for everyday investors. We are dumb money. Hey there, Dave here, along with Chris and Jordan. We are Dumb Money. Welcome to Dumb Money Live. Now is the time to smash the like button or like the smash button. Either way, subscribe if you're not already. Drop a comment in the live chat. Do everything you possibly can to get this video noticed by the almighty YouTube algorithm. Chris Jordan, I don't know if you guys caught the uh, Warren Buffett show this weekend, uh, but his comments his co comments on Bitcoin basically dominated my Twitter feed. But I think what he said about stock investments, far more insightful. Uh, Jordan, I know you're in HP. He bought $4 billion of uh, HP stock. Or are you, are you I'm still not in, in it because... Chris guilted me out of it. Oh my gosh. It's oh, the no. worst sell. I feel that's the <laughs> Wait, only sale what? that I regret of all of last year. Well, Wait, I guilty you out of what? I, I kind of think of the it, three it, of us as the the uh, you know Jordan's probably on the Warren Buffett scale, uh, more than, than anyone. But uh, for Elon and Warren to have similar well. things. Yeah, he Chris, Wait, he's talking Jordan, about what did I H, HP stock. Hewlett Packard, which uh, Warren Buffett is buying a lot more of right now. You were making fun of me for owning HP, and I'm like, you know what? You're you're smart. You're probably right. I'm probably an idiot for holding on to it, but I was well, an idiot selling. I mean, how is I HP money, killing so, it right now? Yeah. I haven't. I, I, is HP really killing it right now? I don't understand that. Well, I mean, yeah, they're, they're higher than no, they're doing, they're, 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 It's just something that that Warren sees as as potentially the. Uh, a good uh, hedge for inflation, which we're, which is what we're talking about today. Recession-proof stocks, yeah. inflation-proof stocks. Basically, we are living through and seeing firsthand inflation that, that we haven't seen in like 40 years. So uh, not in any of our lifetimes, um, but pretty much everyone says a refresh recession is coming. So we need to figure out what to do with our portfolios. Yeah, I, I I don't know that HP by the way is such an inflation. I know I know he's I know why he's saying it inflation proof, but I don't think I don't think it's the best way to think about an inflation proof. And he didn't necessarily say it's an I, inflation uh, hedge, but it's just one of the he's he's buying he bought forty billion dollars worth of new stocks four zero B, and yeah, yeah. Uh, as a part of that, uh, four billion went to HP. Um, and he's buying Apple, and he bought a lot more Chevron, which I think Jordan's also big on oil and gas stocks. Ooh, I sold all my hey, Exxon. Listen, so I, I've, I, am, I am not. So I think oil prices are going to come down. So I, well, I, I, I think one thing that... Buying. Well, home, but what, what, you can't say that Warren Buffett is buying... The one thing that Warren Buffett said that I think a lot of people don't understand is he doesn't buy very much at all. He has a team of people that make decisions. Most of the stocks that they're buying, he doesn't even know that they're buying. He has no input on them. So it's just like the, the Berkshire Hathaway company right now is not Warren Buffett. They're, he has his say on a few things, um, but a lot of the stuff have has nothing to do with Warren Buffett, which is in most cases, maybe a good thing because, listen, Warren Buffett has not been the greatest investor over the past 15 years. He looks really good in times like now, uh, and he has huge strategic advantages as an investor, but 
he has completely been late and missed the boat on on modern innovation which is the most important thing as an investor and he, he admitted i mean i i love warren buffett because he admits where he he's he's you know where he underperforms uh and i think he would even tell you that uh you know he was not he he, he was not in a position to see a lot of the world's innovations the last 20 25 years and he missed out on some of the biggest runs and for what decade and a half he underperformed the stock market in general, which is like just pitiful for the world's greatest investor. But he'll tell you that. Like, I'm not making fun of him. Like, like he'll say that. So we shouldn't put him on this huge pedestal as if he Warren just has Buffett strengths, right? And his strengths, alcohol. he's a deep value investor, right? And so we know what he can do well. And tech is not one of them. Uh, yeah. I mean, also, Jordan, he was around at a time where he had the ability to strategically um, he had a strategic advantage over other investors because of what he had access to for many, many years yeah. and decades. Um, and and the great some of the greatest Warren Buffett returns that make his portfolio look outstanding over a long period of time back when he was outperforming the market were literally just a very small handful, very small handful of companies, right? That 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 he had picked um, that he stuck with for a long time that over a generation. Uh, their single returns from this very small handful of companies made him look like a genius. And by the way, I always yeah. say it doesn't. You don't have to pick winning stocks every day. If you're able to do one or two or three things right over a 20-year period, that's all it really takes to, to outperform the market. And that and that's what he did. So and kudos to right him, now, but... he happens. To, this is a year-to-date chart we're looking at. He happens to be outperforming this terrible market that we've been in. Uh, and so he, everybody, he... all eyes are are shifting back to Warren, but. You know, over the past year, also outperforming out of the after the past five years, for, for most of that, he's outperformed. Yeah, but I mean, he has a certain inv investment style that that does well in these environments because when the market's crushing it, he underperforms. You know, so it's like you have to pick. What, what are you What are you looking for? For him, you know, maybe this is okay. Um, but, you know, Jordan, you told me a long time ago, when we were talking about uh, Berkshire Hathaway, and I was like, I couldn't put a penny in Berkshire Hathaway. Like, I, I just think it's a complete waste, waste of my financial resources to have money sitting with, you know, that team. In today, maybe 50 years ago, they had huge informational edges, right? Uh, no, I think so. We talked about this. The only, I, I think the only downside to investing in Berkshire Hathaway is you've got a huge risk if Charlie or... Uh, or uh, or uh, Warren die right? I mean, I think that that's gonna your the stock will take a hit when that happens, for yeah, sure. Even though they're not the ones hit. pulling the triggers, like they're they're not. It, it probably doesn't it, even matter it, to the business, but I, it will be a huge hit to the stock. Yeah, Honestly, and I think they're, some they're of trying the stuff to that has come... pave the way for that. When you have a 91, 90, 91 year old uh, namesake, I mean, his name's not. Berkshire Hathaway. But when you have a 91-year-old dude who is basically the face of the fund, uh, you you make serious uh, plans to have a succession plan, and that's why he's not the day-to-day -day stock picker, uh, which I think it will have less effect. But I think it's about, yeah, I, mean, like, I think you could find worse places to put money than in Berkshire Hathaway. I agree. If, if, if the strategy is you can find worse places, then there's a lot of great places to put your money. But like that, that's a terrible way to think about the precious dollars that we all have to invest in the market. I don't disagree. Worse places, but you so. do get a very talented management team there that their mind is on return for their shareholders. You don't have to worry I, about I it. I disagree. You can just offset. It's basically like buying the spy. Right, you, you just you can just buy no. it and not, you know, don't worry about it. You could do then, that. Then, then, then buy then 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 buy spy and save yourself some some expenses of paying that management team. And he would yeah. you know Warren tells you the same thing. He's just like just go buy. I, I but he would tell you it's probably better to buy spy than, than than Berkshire Hathaway, quite honestly, because they don't have that talent. I don't know why we and think they're. He's team been is saying talented. that for years. He's They've been saying that that talented. the S and P index is what most people should just buy dollar cost average right. into. Just just <clears> do that consistently over. Over time and you're going Buy to beat the market yeah, yeah. Uh, they, they, their team has proven to not be talented okay i'm just i'm just saying they prove it because they have strategic advantages because of their access they have access that few other people have they have the ability to make moves and 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 and, and set up set up 
financial structure around some of their investments that are so advantageous to what the common person can do over the past 20 years, even with that, even with that power, because they have an enormous amount of power to get into deals that we could never get into, especially when times were bad back in 2008, 2009. Even with all of that, they still out mis underperform the market. That shows you how little talent their team has. Like, <laughs> but th that again, then again, you could say they're investing a lot of money, and that's hard to do at that scale. And I, I could appreciate that. I I'm just saying, like, I. They have they're at a huge disadvantage and that the amount of money they have to invest makes their job really, really difficult. Right. They, they, they just can't maneuver in and out of things quickly at all. Anyway, that, that's a, this is not about a rant on Berkshire. Um, uh, it's just not what it's about. But I, it really gets me going guys, because people have this thing of what they think of Berkshire Hathaway and Warren Buffett. And I've read his books. Believe me, I've studied I'd study Warren Buffett for decades. I love the guy. I think he's awesome, but it's just not what people think. Um, okay, so getting back to this, do you know what I think is the best way before we talk about any stocks? The best way to think about investing through inflation, you have to find, you have to find growth. You have to find the companies that are innovating, man. Like you, that's the way you bust through inflation, right? Like you find companies that are innovating and have the ability to expand their growth through an inflationary period. And I think, I think you're going to do fine. By the way, we're not financial advisors. We didn't say it, guys. This is kind of our thoughts on inflationary uh, investments. Uh, we don't understand your risk tolerance. Please don't mimic this for your own accounts. It's just our thoughts. Poke holes See, in it on. What, I, and I and I disagree with uh, that. I think that a blanket that uh, a blanket statement that innovation is going to be what you want to be in and inflation. That's that to me. Yeah. Unless you have pricing power on that innovation, I don't see I don't see that as as working out. And I will point to uh, nope. Ark K compared to Warren B. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the innovation going on at Teladoc, Chris. <laughs> okay, first of all, first of all, okay, when you say, Jordan, that has nothing, I don't know the innovation going on at Teladoc. What I'm saying is you have to be investing in companies that are inno innovating and expanding their growth and revenue growth uh, through an inflationary period. If you do that, for me, that is the best way. And, and listen, it, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like there's never a bad time to invest in a great company. That means when you're investing in companies that are expanding their growth, rapidly expanding their growth, it doesn't matter whether you're investing in an inflationary time, during a recessionary time. And that's why a lot of our investments are in early stage companies, because in play, it's not going to impact them. If you're growing your revenues at 400% a year, right? Inflation's not going to impact you very much. Inflation impacts companies generally that are large, generally that need to continue to borrow money, right? Because they're not having to borrow money at higher rates, right? Companies that have uh, less of a growth trajectory through that inflationary period. That's just a fact. Guys, this is a fact. This is not, I'm not making this up. This isn't like, like a thesis of mine. This is a widely accepted fact. I'm just sharing it for people that don't understand this about investing through inflationary periods. I think 99 out of 100 people, even the people that I, you know, don't always agree with on finding alpha and in investments on Wall Street will tell you that's just that's just the way it's always been. Um, so I, I think if we look at our portfolios and you could find companies that are differentiating themselves and continuing to find ways to innovate in the marketplace and find new areas of growth that are not currently seen in their stocks today, meaning they're going to grow in ways that are not currently priced in to their company stock today, that will and should beat out any negatives of inflation, right? Like like that, that's just, a, I think that's a proper mindset investing in, uh, during right. inflationary so i want to hear your uh your your picks which stocks are you looking at that are going to outperform inflation well i i i do <laughs> someone's saying it right now i i do a really interesting inflationary bet and by the way i want to talk about this company because earnings are today um i don't know i'm really on the fence right now on on this this earnings report for airbnb but airbnb is the company i want to talk about because 
you know, there's something interesting that Airbnb has that other companies don't have, which is, I think, in an inflationary environment. And if we add on top of that a potential recession, which I don't think we're getting right now, but we could maybe get in the next 12 to 18 months, uh, if that actually materializes, Airbnb's number one growth driver, because remember, I'm, I'm looking for companies that can expand their growth. Their growth driver is actually in their ability to bring on additional inventory because they don't pay for inventory, right? So it's a really weird company that they don't have to pay for their own inventory, right? They don't have to go out and advertise or pay for their own inventory, but when they need to get more hosts, right? So what is a scenario where Airbnb could massively expand the number of hosts and the volume of inventory on the platform, therefore naturally just giving them more revenue, that would be an inflationary environment and or a recessionary environment where people are looking to both monetize assets that they own. Maybe maybe they choose to stay there less because they need to monetize it if they're in a situation where uh, it's a recessionary environment for them, might not be a recessionary environment for somebody else, right? Because a recession today looks very different than a recession looked 20, 30 years ago, right? Because sometimes we see parts of the economy in recession and other parts are not in a recession. So we could see a massive influx of new hosts that are looking to generate cash flow in a recession. Also, in this inflationary environment, we could have a lot of people that are looking to take advantage of that, right? We're seeing rising rates in how much people can get for their Airbnbs right now. And people might have a job that pays them $80,000 a year or $120,000 a year. Well, their employer, just because we're in an inflationary environment, not everybody gets wage increases to match inflation as quickly as it's going up right now, right? So a lot of people are saying, hey, I wish I was getting more money to make up for this inflation, but I'm not. But you know what is going up? The amount of money I can get for that Airbnb property I own or the amount of money we can get for our back house or the amount of money we can get for our whole house when we go on our two or three vacations a year. I normally don't like doing that because I don't like people staying in my bed or my house or whatever. But shoot, the rates are up 50%. So maybe I will do it. I think that is super interesting, unique to Airbnb. It's just like a unique benefit that I'm not sure the market um, really gives them credit for in this type of environment. Now, it's separate from like this er this earnings call that we're going to get today. So I'm not saying this is going to going to come to play, um, but it's something that I think is a really nice thing for Airbnb in this inflationary recessionary environment. It's a huge win for them. Yeah, I hadn't I hadn't really thought of Airbnb as uh, an inflation hedge in itself, but I kind of get your argument there and don't have a problem with it. What but they, I did, they have billions in cash too. Remember, they have yes. billions in cash, right? So that also means that Airbnb doesn't necessarily in the very near term future at least need to go out and raise massive capital at you know at these inflationary rates too. So that's kind of another angle where Airbnb could benefit Hopefully they're because putting they, that by the way, cash Dave, in something that itself has an inflation hedge component because any company with a lot of cash right now is losing money on the cash. Well, well, they, yes, and I don't know what they're using their cash on. I didn't look into that. But Dave, Airbnb makes a percentage of revenue, right? And so if we're in an inflationary environment and yes. all of those places are going up, up, up in terms of what they're charging. Airbnb simply makes their, what, 18%, whatever it is, right? They just yeah. simply make their cut of that, right? So they're just, they're literally winning. The inflation is working to their advantage. Like they're moving up rapidly in real time with inflation. And what's what I think is so interesting is that so many companies that are in the product business had these huge gaps, right? Um, of what they're having to pay for product to get it shipped, to get it moved, to get it manufactured. And they can't like, they can't turn that knob of what they're charging up quick enough. So they have these painful period when they're, they don't want to like really disrupt their, their distrib distributor and their retailer relationships and their customer relationships. So they're in a quandary. Airbnb, it's instantaneous, right? It's literally yeah. real time. They get the benefit from the inflation side. Yeah, I, I like them for that. That's so basically I went through my portfolio and said with everything in my in my holdings, is this going to be a, a 
good in the inflation and recession times? Is this is this going to be helped or hurt by uh, a recession and or inflation? And the ones that were going to be hurt, I sold out of, and I did that a while while back. So, I, and I'm today just kind of double checking to make sure everything that I'm holding, my top holdings, I, I like Apple uh, and Tesla. Um, Airbnb is one of my top holdings. There are things that I, I'm concerned about, like um, Coinbase, but they're up today, by the way, a little bit. Little so, yeah, um, I, I agree with you on, on Airbnb. Yeah, I think, I think, by the way, like, you know, Tesla is just, you know, I, I think that for, for various reasons, some of these other companies like Coinbase and Tesla are just, you have to think about them differently. They're just their their risk ass, risk assets right yes. because there's a lot of questions as to what's going to happen with this space or or that space um i i don't know like i feel like this is an environment where we we, we want to have more maybe sometimes more visibility um than we get out of some of those companies so th those companies tend to be more volatile um, and you know what I've what I've kind of said the last few months in this environment, we want to do less, trade less, just take, I don't know, just be just be less active, <laughs> less active in the market and, and whatever it takes so that you can sleep at night. Um, for me, it's been hedging like 50 percent of my portfolio. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Jordan, yeah, so you I've got, got any different on all of this. So um, I think inflation is starting to peak. And so I think sometime in the next few months, the Fed will realize this. Um, and, you know, given that we're probably going to go into a recession, um, I, I don't think they can be as aggressive with rate cuts uh, or with, with rate increases as they have been talking and what the market really expects, which is like 10 and a quarter base, you know, 10 and a quarter rate hikes over the next, uh, over the next, what, like nine months, 10 months by the end of the year. Yep. Um, so I so my bet is to actually uh, buy bonds, and so I think you've seen the bonds kind of price in as bad of a case of rate hikes as they possibly can. You've got the thirty-year and the ten-year yesterday kind of peaked over three percent, um, and so I think sometime soon you can take a stab at some of these um, bond funds like TLT and uh, and you know play the Jordan, play the can you rate explain back down. For, I mean, I know, but, but can you explain for people watching, like, why that makes sense? Like, a lot of people have never bought a bond or even understand the concept of, like... Right, so basically what's going works. on is, so, you know, there's a, so bond, the price and the, and the you know, and the yield are you know, inversely correlated to where yields go up, price goes down, and that's what's been happening. So the Fed comes out and starts talking a big game of raising rates, and bonds are down... Um, a ton, right? Um, and so, um, I mean, just like in the past, what, like in the past three weeks, I think the TLT's down like 14, 15%. Um, and this is kind of unprecedented. You've never really seen bonds move this fast in that direction. Um, and at some point there's gonna, it, it has to end, right? There, you, you know, we're not- What is I that think, ticker what, what on? Saying I, is mean, that I mean, I mean, Jordan- bond bond Given the worst case scenario for what they're gonna do for raising rates, so at some point, people are going to stop selling bonds, right? And there's going to be a bond demand as the, you know, as the as the rates start to come back down. Um, so T B T. Oh, now, what what was the symbol that you you quoted? So T L T is the twenty plus. Uh, Wait, T L T. Here we go. Spell it out for me. T L T. T L T. The iShares twenty year twenty plus year. Treasury bond ETF. T and so that's the one I'm looking at. I've got a small, small position in it yet. Could it keep dropping? Yeah, no. it, it could keep dropping. And this is not, um, you know, I feel like this is something you kind of have to watch every day if you're going to want to do something like this. But I think there's opportunity um, for bonds, bonds are, to correct. Here. Bonds are too uh, boring for my risk tolerance hey, I, I just shot, can't even i just can't even. Not boring, Dave. you're on drugs basically because bonds have been except for the past like six months have been in the biggest bull market ever like the past hey. it's like been a 
15 yeah, to 20 year so bull has, market on So time. have stocks in the past, except for the past six months. Totally. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. if, I, if I'm going to be in a bond, you know what I'd rather do is just not, not invest ever again. That just sounds boring to me. I just can't do it. But, but Dave, no, so did you see I, that? I don't chart, think I'm old enough. Like I feel like I'm not old enough to. Hold them to maturity. Like, that's boring. But watching, you know, these bond funds cruise up and down, it's. Uh... Yeah. It, okay, yeah, that, that, that's this, not boring. This, this looks that's boring to me. This stock, I mean, this, this <laughs> ETF. You could have that lost a lot of money in TLT yeah. over the past six months. I, 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 mean, I mean, I holding a bond through its maturity and just just getting you know getting the rate that that's boring but jordan here yeah, which so is kind of like, wild so i can't believe he's talking about shorting this. bonds over the past six months you could have made a ton of money more yeah, I mean, money than you could have made shorting the spy well well where's the, the so dave how, recovers, show dave that inverse one which is the uh what, what's the inverse of that someone quoted it here on the t t b t b t all right which is the pro <laughs> Pro shares TBT. ultra short. Dave, this is more your style. The ultra okay, short. Yeah. If we're, we're gonna if we're gonna start leveraging our uh, ETF, okay. But <laughs> okay, I have too many things on my uh, chart here to really see anything. I've I've overlaid the QQQ on top of it just to uh, so see how Jordan's how they basically talking about arbitraging what he feels is going to be government right m government moves right like like politics basically like, yeah I, so what you're, what you're kind of banking on is you know either for investors to call the fed's bluff and say you're not going to raise that high or for the fed to actually come out and say you know what we're you know we're gonna we're gonna try this 50 basis point um, but we see things recovering so we don't know if we're going to go to the full two and a half we're going to stop at two we're going to stop at one and a half uh, but this is stuff that's going to unravel over the next, I would say, three months that we'll have some better clarity into that. And so between now and then is when you've got to try to figure out what you think they're going to do. I, I can see that. Um, it, 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 it's, a va it's a valid strategy. I don't know if I'll, you know, I don't know if it's something I'm going to pursue. And so the, basically what you're, you're banking on the Fed looking at a recession, right? Because if they start to see a big recession looming, then they have to cut rates, right? Or they have to effectively cut rates by not raising them. Um, see, in which me, case, the bond market has to respond. And so that's playing that game. But, that's like trying Jordan, to predict the future, right? But and that's what we're no doing right now. We're talking about what to do in a recession, and this is what you well, do. Well, yeah, but, but but the thing is, like, okay, correct. Jo you know, Jordan. J all right, so Jordan's correct. J Jordan's saying that 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 this is his thesis to invest if you believe that a recession is coming, right? Like, like that's it. It's it's valid. I don't think a re recession's not here yet, right? It's not here it's yet, not but, here it, but yet. it definitely yeah. could. And we have to be thinking about this stuff. And it, and if we start to see signs, if people watching this show start to see signs in their own life that they think are are not not being properly seen by the market or recognized by the market of a recession coming because it's funny how we can sometimes see things ourselves before the market is willing to admit up to it because they're waiting on reports that are you know data that's coming that are weeks weeks old um sometimes just in our jobs in our life through our social networks we can see signs of a recession and if you do we, we want to show you some ways that you might want to think about this at least right some some things to explore I think it's valid. Um, I'm going okay, so to. Said if oh. they raise rates, TLT goes down. So look, this, so you've got to realize that right now, um, TLT is sitting at like over, like right around three percent yield, and the Fed funds rate is like a quarter, per, like a quarter percent. So what happens is that actually these funds front run the Fed. And so they're ahead of where the Fed is. And so what they're doing by, you know, increasing the rate, decreasing the price, um, it's, it's, and so Chip Schuyler just said, it's forward looking, right? And so basically it's anticipating what the Fed has already said that they're going to do. And so their 50 bit increase tomorrow, tomorrow shouldn't have really any effect on the TLT because it's already priced in that they're going to be raising rates all year. And that's the reason that it's up at three percent. Um, can I reply to Mike Anderson? He says, "Predict the future." That's all you guys do. I want to be very clear, Mike. I never 
attempt to actually predict the future. I think it's more important for us to accurately understand the present, what's actually happening right now. I, I think people think that you need to be able to predict the future to do well in public markets as a trader or as an investor, and you really don't. Just, just being able to see what's happening right this second um, puts you miles ahead of the market because the market usually doesn't get to see what's happening right now for many, many weeks or sometimes months down the road. So just having an honest look at what's happening this second, whether there's a cultural shift or a shift in consumer behavior that's already started to happen, uh, but hasn't yet shown up in the numbers. It hasn't yet shown up in the data. Uh, it hasn't yet shown up uh, on any company reports, but it has shown up on the street you're able to see it, right? You're seeing it in your social media feed. That's what social ARB investing is all about, being able to quickly detect change that's happening now, not necessarily trying to predict something in the future, which is extremely risky. The reason why we have shows like this is because even if a recession isn't happening today, we want to be mentally prepared that if we do start to see those signs of recession, that you already have run the scenario analysis of what would do well and what wouldn't do well, and you already have a plan in your mind that I am going to buy these stocks and I'm going to sell these stocks the second I see something uh, happening, shifting, so that I'm not having to do that work later. You've already kind of done the homework and you're mentally prepared, right? You have a prepared mind, uh, you've run the scenarios, and you're, you're going to move a little bit quicker than everyone else, right? That's all. So... Um, but I do want to say something about Airbnb. I think it's great. And I mean, you're getting a 5% discount today, basically, because Hilton came out um, with with some warnings this morning that tanked not only Airbnb, but Booking.com. Uh, they're down, what, 5%. And then Expedia got taken to the woodshed. At, like, you know, it was down 15% at one point today, even though they had OK earnings and good outlook. <laughs> So what you know what I think is really interesting, Jordan, when I, I think those are good trades. I mean, just we're coming up on the summer post pandemic. I think people are traveling. I think, you know, those numbers are already starting to come out that um, people are booking. Well, you know, travel. something that I started to see, Jordan, this is interesting because I know that you're kind of an old school VRBO guy. Um, That's why I like Expedia. <laughs> I haven't bought so, it yet. So I, I did not I did not I, I have to read to see how VRBO uh, did. I noticed something fascinating in my data. It looked like I started to see a spread the last 12 months and particularly the last three to six months between Airbnb and VRBO where they were starting to spread and VRBO appears to be losing traffic and not losing traffic, but just like compared to Airbnb, like all my data is starting to spread. And, you know, I want to ask you as a VRBO guy, do you think like, are people starting to slowly like come on board Airbnb to the point where we used to kind of check VRBO and Airbnb and now people are just like all the VRBO old school uh, boomers, now that you're a boomer, but like the VRBO boomers are finally getting on the Airbnb train and that, so if someone looks at VR, VRBO I don't traffic- know. I feel like people are gonna look in both places still. Um... I, I'm not I saying they won't look in both places still. I'm just saying even a 10% shift makes a big difference because like people, yeah. if people are assuming that VRBO and Airbnb move exactly the same as each other, I think that's not necessarily a correct assumption anymore. I yeah. think VRBO could have a quarter to where they're up, you know, this much and Airbnb might be up this much percentage-wise because yeah. I think they're actually taking some market share from VRBO, which I don't it, think you the could market be is right. I think they're both still growing though, right? And so it's a little bit tough to say market share when they're both in like a growth phase. Um, I, 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 and that's why it's, it's difficult, tough, right? Jordan, because and like- I, You know, I, I don't know. I, I could be wrong on this. Um, I, I don't think you can, I think either way you try to play this Airbnb, I'm warming up to Airbnb, especially these prices, but um, I, I, I could see it go. I could see both of them doing just fine in this environment. So I, I do wanna talk about Airbnb earnings today. Um, uh, so Airbnb last quarter, their revenue was up 74 to 78%. I saw sightings of both and I, I haven't had a chance to actually check the source data to see which is correct. Um, so Q1, their revenue is expected to be up 64 and a half percent. So this is year over year data, year over year data. So that would kind of tell us that, you know, relative to last quarter, 
they're going to do a little bit worse year over year. Uh, still showing tremendous growth, obviously, from last year, but a little bit worse. That kind of lines up. I mean, I, I think my data shows last quarter and this quarter being very similar in terms of like a year over year move. So I think there's probably some upside to that, uh, at least from my data sources. Now, uh, one of the concerns for Airbnb is that urban traffic is up. And if urban and, and the company has come out and said this, as urban traffic uh, continues to grow, meaning people are now going back to cities since they're comfortable with with, with the pandemic, the, you know, the the COVID situation, those margins, the Airbnb margins, I guess, in cities, uh, is is smaller for some reason, or, or, or maybe it's I don't know if it's margins or just kind of the the, the revenue rate for Airbnb in in cities is lower than it is. Uh, outside of those urban areas so that it negatively impacts margins basically the, the, the more that that urban traffic goes up that's actually a net negative for airbnb in terms of margins now the other concern for airbnb valid or not and i think we're going to start to see whether this stuff is correct uh during earnings calls like today and next quarter is that airbnb is going to lose some of these lifestyle renters that have been like moot, you know, people like Dave that just, well, Dave doesn't count because he doesn't work. He doesn't have a real job. But like people that decide that they're going to go work in Colorado for a month or two, right? Because they don't have to be in an office. So why not? And maybe they'll Airbnb their normal house and then, then, then use that money to go Airbnb someone else's house in a state that they want to go visit or a cool place. So the question is, you know, the market keeps talking about them losing that, but are they, but are they? Because I know some people are starting to go back to work right now, but I think a lot of people are not. Like, I think a lot of people are not going back to the office right now still. And you could see this war taking place where some employers are trying to get people to come back to work. Um, but ultimately they're not. In fact, I was at dinner. How many episodes am I going to say I was at dinner with a guy this week, but I was at dinner with some people this week. You do a lot and of dinners. One of, so one of them uh, worked for just just actually took a new job with a an insurance company in Florida. And I said, well, are you moving to Florida? And he's like, no, actually, they just chose to close down all of their offices. And instead, they are going to have a conference center where the home office used to be in Florida just so people can go like hang out there and i was like i really think guys i don't know how much of this is happening but i have a funny feeling i've been saying this for a while that we will permanently lose i don't know whether it's 10 15 or 20 percent maybe maybe higher who knows of the of, of the kind of uh you know traditional workspace and that could benefit Airbnb for a very long time. And I don't think yeah. the market appreciates that. Because think about this, no, Jordan. I... We're now going to layer. We're going to layer the vacation traffic on top of these lifestyle Airbnbers. Because everyone was expecting the lifestyle Airbnbers to have to go back to work. Some of them are. Some of them are. But I think most are not having to. And they've gotten really a cut. Dave, do you get addicted to this lifestyle of being able to, like, because you do this. Oh, going for to sure. Go spend the month? For sure. And I can tell you that... I'm going to be taking a road trip in the big van, and you know I don't sleep in the big van for more than two nights in a row, so I have hotels booked along the way. Uh, and I was just I was just checking my schedule to see what I've booked, uh, Airbnb versus hotels, and here's, here's what I found. And I don't know if this holds true for other people, but for me, when I'm traveling somewhere for a shorter period of time, I've booked hotels because of the convenience and consistency, you know what you're gonna get, you know there's gonna be someone to check in. But for the longer periods, if I'm gonna to plan to be somewhere for a week or longer, I've been uh, booking Airbnbs just because you get a different experience. You get to be a part of a community. You get to be like more embedded in the place that you're traveling to. And I think that if you take that a little bit further with the work from home and work from wherever uh, lifestyle, the longer term bookings with Airbnb, which by the way, have a built-in discount when you stay 30 days at most places, um, that just, in, it, it just motivates you to do that. Where when I'm on Hilton.com or Bonvoy, I don't see a you know 30 day discount 
you can get a lower rate. If you if you book a hotel for, for longer, you get a lower rate, but it's, it's kind of just built into the mentality of Airbnb from the very beginning. And I've that's how I've booked. And I, th I think that you're right about the trend of, it, it's not everybody. Not everybody who got to work from home during the pandemic is not going back to work, but there are a lot of people who are now in a new world where their corporate job has realized you don't need to be in the office every day. We were we were just as effective, if not more so, with everyone working remotely, and a lot of them are um, are becoming more lax on that. And I think it was uh, was it Airbnb that I just saw announce that all of their workforce is now going to be able to work remotely. It's it was a big company. I'm pretty sure it's Airbnb. Well, it, it doesn't count if it's Airbnb because they're incentivized to make a big splashy announcement about that. I mean, of course they want everybody working remote forever, yeah. right? Like that's that's amazing for Airbnb. I, I just think it's an underappreciated permanent shift in work culture that is not going to ever change the same way that casual attire is a shift that did not happen overnight, it happened over decades. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are still companies that you have to suit up. But for the most part, it's a shift that we're never going back on. And I, I, I'm a pretty good confidence based on what I'm seeing right now that the same thing, you know, the same thing will happen here with, with, with remote work. Um, by the way, guys, uh, I think also to uh, what else on Airbnb? Oh, so Pedro, one of our mods basically said here that his rates, I think, are the highest they've ever been. I think it was Pedro uh, this quarter at his Airbnbs and wants to know if we would start our, our position before earnings today. I do think we have to be careful with Airbnb because it is a company that is valued richly, valued kind of like a tech company in some ways, right? And those companies have been punished severely for anything negative. So there, if you kind of look at Airbnb and you try to look for negatives, if there's even an inkling of anything negative, and one of the negative things that could be there, we don't know, is having to shut down Russia and the Ukraine entirely. Now, I, I thought they were kind of pulling out of Russia anyway, uh, but the, the Ukraine and, and Russia, whatever the revenue they do have there would have gone to zero. Uh, and also any surrounding countries um, related, you know, around Russia and Ukraine likely saw a pretty dramatic decrease in business. That does worry me some. I just I've been looking for the number and I I'm having a hard time finding like what Airbnb Airbnb's revenue number is for that, like that just that slice, that area. I think it is clear that Europe is rebounding with travel uh quicker than here in the US all of a sudden right like they're having they're having a big rebound so i think airbnb will do really well generally in europe but if that little patch hurt them enough to be the surprise that kind of that no one should care about but because we're because we're mm. looking for a reason to punish any company for any reason in this market I, I think know. I think that that particular reason will have been priced in. I think that if there is an unexpected, just drop in new signups or drop in host, uh, you know, I, and I don't even know that they are going to report at that granular of a level. But those they are the things that, that they seem to be post. most punished on. Yeah, I think they do. I'll, I'll say this. I'm not going to come out and say like Airbnb is like a high conviction trade for me this quarter or anything. But I do I do kind of like the risk reward enough that like if I look at my portfolio, you know, I own Airbnb, obviously, Dave, we, we both love Airbnb, yeah. but I, I just don't own I don't own a lot of it at all. Uh, honestly, I, it's one of those stocks that I had to sell off when I was trying to be smart about it. Now, how is Airbnb up all of a sudden? I thought they were down. A lot. No, it's down five percent right now. It's one forty four. Yeah, oh, oh, is down. my okay? So, Ameritrade. All, I, I hate Amer like the cash on Ameritrade on my app. It just it's so inaccurate sometimes. So here's it's here's a me. five day chart of Airbnb, and I put uh, the other big hotel stocks on there too. And you can see that they all took a hit uh, today as we're moving towards that earnings line, um, but. I actually sold well, options, some Airbnb. Dave. I was going to say I could, I might get some calls. 
I, I, I would consider getting some calls. I um I sold some of my Airbnb at you can see where <laughs> I sold on that chart. I don't know how I timed the market that well. That's bizarre. I, I sometimes mark where I get in and out of things just so I can visually uh, see. Um, I this might be an opportunity for me to buy some more Airbnb, just to hold it long term. Um, or you and can I get think options that and ahead of <laughs> earnings would be the time for me to do it. Or yeah, you're right. I could get options, or I could. Uh, okay, so sell I some just puts. bought. I bought options just now, Dave. I, I just bought thirty contracts for twenty-two thousand dollars. Just we'll see. We'll see. I'm not. I'm not doing anything crazy right now. But for me, oh sorry. Uh, yes, thirty contracts, twenty-three thousand uh, dollars. I bought the May sixth, one hundred and forty-five calls. I don't have a lot of conviction in that. I, I don't. I don't have a ton of conviction in that trade. But I do want to have a little bit more exposure to Airbnb than I have right now because it's just too light in my portfolio. It's way too light. Yeah, I think mine is too because I, I did sell a bunch of shares. Um, I sold, yeah, I, I had ago. to. But I was selling everything off. And, and I always knew that I didn't want the market risk in Airbnb between up until earnings and i'm so happy that i sold out of airbnb going into earnings because look at what happened the market risk today even smacked them down right uh, uh, with their competitors getting hurt so who knows i mean listen everybody wants everybody's hating on travel today so i i, I would I not be surprised if airbnb because I gets think that's one of the best places to be maybe not the best place to be but i think it's a good place to be right now i I agree, Jordan. I need to read into some of those earnings earning reports. Yeah. You said what was the main concern uh, that came out today? Well, I didn't read it. I read a headline that said that uh, that basically Expedia was up until um, the Hilton call, and then it tanked. And so what was I going didn't on? Read exactly what was going on with Hilton? Comments were. It's something that I've been meaning to go back and look at. Um, what was? Do you have any idea what happened over at Hilton? No, I don't. But what's weird is if Hilton's not down that far. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so it's it's a guidance it's a guidance issue. So but I thought Expedia had a good guide. So that was the weird thing. I thought I thought Expedia was fine. I didn't see. I mean, I could be wrong, and I didn't listen to the call, um, but I didn't see anything that looked nuts. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything obvious in the Hilton report right here. But at the same time, guys, listen, it's not like the concept that travel is hot is a secret that only we have access to. So it could just be a matter of the market. Listen, oh, come on, guys. Hilton's at like an all-time high. That's why it got smacked down today. And this is the concern. Everybody knows travel is hot, but the market is super weak, and these travel stocks hadn't gotten their beat down. Uh, so anything less than truly spectacular, they're going to get slapped. And that, it looks like that's what happened to Hilton today. I mean, pull that pull that two-year chart on Hilton, guys. Pull the five-year on Look at that two-year. I mean, in this market, even after that six-point move down by Hilton, Hilton's still looking pretty good. So I, that's the risk going into Airbnb earnings today. The risk is people are assuming, I bet you the whisper number is probably higher than the aggregation of analyst ex estimates over the past few weeks on Airbnb. And that sets up a potential problem unless they really come in and not only outperform for the quarter, but also really surprise us to the upside when it comes to guidance. And, so I'm looking at you know, headlines on Expedia, right and I don't see anything crazy. The craziest thing that I see is that the uh, one of the flavor saver guys on CNBC uh, said that their earnings were horrible, but I, I don't see anybody else saying that. So. <laughs> Um, I also don't think Hilton is like a great measure of the style of travel that we have that's roaring back right now. Um, this is part of the reason why I was a little, I mean, Hilton's done really well, obviously, uh, yeah. running into this uh, quarter in terms of stock price. But if someone mentioned Playa, and yes, I mean, listen, Playa, Playa Resorts is has been one of my favorite picks. My biggest concern with Playa Resorts is it's a really small company. They have like, what? 14, 15, 16 beachfront resorts, but it's all leisure. It's all all inclusive. And 100% of the company is in Mexico, Jamaica, and Dominican Republic. And I think they are going to be beautifully positioned 
to capture the increased demand in terms of uh, elasticity of demand being very high, meaning that people are willing to pay out, you know, people are willing to pay up to get that hotel room that they want. They're willing to pay up for vacations right now. As long as airfares don't kill us with fuel prices, which is always a concern, uh, I think Playa will be in a really good place as a pure play on oceanfront resorts in those three countries. Um, I still have a lot of Playa. I have a ton of Playa. Just added a little bit more Airbnb today. I told you guys I like booking.com and you're saying they got crushed today, Jordan, but, but, but their earnings are tomorrow. No, and... Expedia got crushed today. Oh, Expedia. Okay, but you said Booking.com's down as well. Yeah, Booking.com, but, but that's why Airbnb. That's why the whole sector's yeah. down, basically. Yeah. So Booking.com, I would imagine, is better positioned than anyone else for like the next three to five months in terms of European traffic popping, uh, European uh, travel. I mean, listen, they're like fifty, what fifty percent plus of their revenue is Europe, which is insane. So, you know, if you want to play European travel, booking.com is it. Um, yeah. By the way, there is there is a, a longer term trend on Airbnb, Dave, that's kind of interesting. I don't know if you've seen it because you spent a lot of time on their app. Mm -hmm. So they're starting, they have been getting more into hotel bookings on their site. I guess they have boutique hotel rooms yeah. that list on their site. And the, the, the concept is that booking providers like Booking.com and Expedia take a huge, pretty big chunk of revenue uh, in addition to advertising, <laughs> right, from, from these hospitality providers. And Airbnb might ultimately become a more efficient way for hospitality providers to market their properties to people because Airbnb is looking at that business as like, well, that's just kind of like an ancillary freebie for us, right? So if, if we can like get in on that business, how cool would that be? And let's not forget that business is monstrously, monstrously large. And what Airbnb has that a lot of these other travel providers like Booking.com and Expedia don't have is insane organic traffic. So a lot of, or most of the traffic that Expedia gets in Travelocity and Booking.com, Trips.com, most of their traffic is actually paid for. So they're actually buying that on Google. So they're taking a huge part of their revenue and they're paying fees to Google so that when someone types in, I want to go to a hotel in Jamaica, they actually end up on one of Booking.com's websites, and then Booking.com makes a huge amount of money from the hotel, but takes the majority of that money and pays it to Google, right? So how interesting of a business model that Airbnb being so differentiated, people, it's its own thing. People just go to Airbnb, but then if you don't find the house you're looking for, the room, Maybe you also look at hotels and it's like, you're already in the app, your credit card. I, I haven't booked a hotel room date. Have you ever booked a hotel I've, room through Airbnb? I've not booked a hotel through Airbnb. And I think it's just because I haven't seen that many listings. It's not, it hasn't been that prominent, at least in the places where I've been searching. Or I knew what I was going to get a hotel and I didn't start there. I, what a I usually changer that would be for that. I don't know how because people like, actually book hotels anymore because I just use Bonvoy. See, I just use uh, Google and search for hotels using Google yeah. built-in travel. Same. That's a, that's where I start with flights too. I, you know, Google has just become the everything for me. So, so Jordan, you're using um, you're using Bonvoy as do I for a lot of like my go-to cities. And I think a lot of people do fun. that, right? So, like anybody that's got any corporate points you're part or anything of the like that, program, they're locked yeah. into Hilton or they're yeah. locked into Marriott, you know, or they, they they've got their platform, they want the points, right? Listen, we're, we're 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 frugal and we're points oriented, right? And I and I told we're, we want to utilize our points, but that market hasn't really like changed. There will always be a segment of the market that always right. does that. There's a huge segment of the market that doesn't. And also, anytime yeah. you go to a place that doesn't have a lot of their hotels, or maybe you want something a bit more interesting, you're probably going to do a dual search. And, do right. and obviously that and doesn't also. work for if you want to go rent a house. And if you want to rent a house, yeah. you're looking at HomeAway VRBO, or you're looking at uh, Airbnb. Um, 
but I thought Bonvoy was trying to get into that market as well. Uh. Well, yeah, they all kind of have tried to get in that market, but it's so bad, dude. It's yeah. so bad. I, I, I actually I actually looked at what they were doing in that space. I was just like, you know what? Like, people, you can't put a price on just frictionless experience. And you want to go to the... This is a winner-takes-all market. I truly believe it is. and I, I truly think that VRBO is going to be around forever, probably. But I think they'll slowly, that business will slowly erode into Airbnb because you just want to go to one place that has the most properties, that the UI experience is the best. And Airbnb, it just happens to be that place, right? Yeah, and so, I don't know. I mean, I look, I, I kind of agree with that. And I kind of think that uh, all these places that want to rent their house are mildly shady anyways. And they want to they wanna get you one time on the app and they want to like book you you know, on the back end and not have you go through the app because they make a lot more money. Um, and so yeah. I think they're price conscious. So I think it's going to be a competition on who has better rates for these guys. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine the rates coming way down because at the end of the day, Jordan, you have to be really large to attract host. VRBO yeah. can do it. They're big enough, right? VRBO can do it. Obviously, Airbnb does it. So, like, VRBO is not going to want to give away any margin, not even one point. There's no way that Expedia is like, let's get into a price war with Airbnb. Like, they know that's not going to help them much if they're like, but we're cheaper than Airbnb, right? Like, that's not, that would be like a death spiral for them. They're, they're just thinking corporate. They want they want to make every penny they can off the business they get. And the, to the day that that company dies, if it ever does, VRBO, they're going to believe that they can figure out new ways to attract customers because they have huge corporate teams. You know how it works, short. Sure. Like if one corporate team doesn't do it, they'll bring in another marketing department. Like they'll just do that for the next 20 years. Just like Yahoo probably thought, Dave, you remember how many new teams came into Yahoo thinking, no, 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 we're going to save this. We'll partner with AT&T and AT&T has like 190 million or 300 million customers and they're going to reju like we're, we're going to switch from being a search engine to a uh broadband provider uh, no we're now going to be a media company oh no 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 we're now going to be a yeah it was it was a lot of that guys what do you think about um what do you think about uber someone just brought up uber lyft uh, uh lyft reports tonight don't they yeah, so Lyft is interesting because it's like, you know, it's your pure play, right? And we all know that that is another, so that, it's interesting. So we're talking about inflate, you know, companies that would do well in inflationary periods and recessionary periods. Is Lyft another one that gets to instantaneously adjust their pricing, right? Based on what they, they can do. get away with, Yeah. right? And so- Maybe, and, and I don't know. The problem is, I, I think that they've got a cap on how much they can charge and then people just start looking for other options yeah, okay what are so your other options if you are needing to get a ride somewhere it's uber or lyft well no sometimes it's out of convenience right and so you're like oh well maybe i'll have some drinks and so i'll take a lyft but if it's too expensive you're like i'll just have yeah, i'll risk it don't have to worry yeah. about it um, so, so jordan how about this how about this is is it a is it a company like airbnb that as inflation happens and the amount of money that people can get up, even though there's a cap on it, where people it will be headed into a recession to where people are looking ways to supplement their income, do they get more drivers, right? Do they get more drivers? Yeah, maybe they and then get more drivers. I think it's always going to do well in like, um, you know, especially coming into vacation season in those destinations, right? So, you know, Lyft is going to kill it, you know, around Florida and California and places like that. But you know, I think it's more price sensitive when you're when you make it into, you know, like New York City. And and, uh, and also, you know, if you attract like more drivers, you're actually lowering your revenue because yeah. the more drivers lowers their ability to mark up the prices based on availability. Um, don't they, they make the same profit no matter what, right? The drivers no, they, get a, they get a cut. They, they get a, a, they, a, no, they get a percentage. Cut. Yeah. yeah, they're not taking a flat fee per ride. They're taking right. a percentage of the ride. Oh, they'll get more so, volume, yeah. right, with lower prices. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't I'll see what their earnings look like because they still don't make any money. Is the problem? Yeah, I mean, listen. And so if you're looking for like Jordan, high right. quality companies that make money, I mean, they have good technology, but they don't make money. 
this is a risk risk off environment, right? It's a risk off environment where the market is really looking to punish those companies when they don't deliver, right? Because yeah. like the second they don't, the second they don't deliver. And by the way, it's a pro, a little bit of a problem with Airbnb because of the yeah. perception, right or wrong, that Airbnb is way overvalued, and that Airbnb. Listen, and they are valued really highly, and that and that Airbnb is kind of one of these, you know, high mover stocks from the past two years, two three years. They also got, by the way, guys, Airbnb was a little bit of a pandemic, pandemic stock. And you know how people love to hate those. Like if you look at all the other pandemic stocks, they got murdered. And there's yeah. something psychological there, don't you think about, well. Yeah, well, it's psychological, could... but at the same point, like, you know, we know that discretionary stocks are getting hammered. But at the same time, like the only place discretionary to really be right now is, tra is travel, right? Like that's the right yeah. discretionary place to be. Um, so yeah. I saw Pedro commented, uh, people consume more alcohol during a recession. Is there a play there? I pulled up, uh, we, we've seen tap is, has been you going You know, up my issue, good yeah, and listen, I, I have months. a really small position, guys, in tap, which is crazy because it's the largest position I've ever had in my entire life. If you go back, I don't know what, a year ago, a year and a half ago, I wish I would have kept that full position with how strong it came back. Um, but there are some concerns, I think, with with tap that are just something that you need that keep you up at night, which is the cost, right? The, these cost drivers of, of employment and getting people the shipping prices and the fuel prices of getting trucks around the world, uh, shipping this beer all over the place. Like it's commodity prices, guys, right? I mean, commodity prices like because it's, you got to realize not, that like when you talk about you know, some of the products that they make that are like the highest volume beers that you can possibly make, that those things yeah. are very sensitive to input costs. Yeah, so, so, so you're right, Jordan. Like what I, by the way, that's not saying that TAP is a bad investment because TAP is benefiting, as I've always said, TAP is, is, is Molson Coors is positioned so beautifully to benefit from the reopening. And we all know the reopening is certainly happening now. Like it took forever for concerts to start to ramp back up. It took forever for sports to like fully, fully really ramp back up and music festivals and weddings and all that stuff. Right, guys. And, and, and by the way, Europe was completely closed down so much longer than we were closed down here. But now Europe is starting to ramp up. So like Molson Coors is just positioned so beautifully for that reopening trade. So you have to balance, like, where's the risk and what does the market care about? If they come out and revenue exceeds expectations because of the reopening, but costs exceed what the market assumed costs would be because of all these concerns, what commodity price and, and you know, the cost of labor and supply chain, getting aluminum for cans, right? Like, what does the market care about? And this is my big issue as a social arb trader right now. It's so hard to assess what these investors, what the market cares about most right now. It's really difficult. You have to be careful. I can't, I can't like over lever into any trade right now. Cause I think, I think I know what I'm doing. And then like one thing happens and like, that's what the market cares about. Well, Airbnb is up like seven or $8 after hours. So. All right, dude. All right. So I yeah. probably at least broke even on those options. That I paid six bucks. Those <laughs> options were basically like at the money, and I think I paid like six to seven bucks each. So if it goes up six to seven dollars, I should have some premium value left for at least the rest of the week. So let's hope Airbnb sticks. Well, that's good. There Look we go. Right here, man. Still we did on the it. rise. We still did on it. the rise. All right. Still, let's do it. Let's do it. I would now. Now I wish I would have invested more. Uh, I wish I would this have said exciting. I didn't have high I, I didn't even real. We, you know, we did the show later today than usual. I didn't realize that it was uh, right. I thought it was 11 a.m., Dave. <laughs> like Jordan just said that. I was like, what are you talking about, dude? Yeah, so it looks like your classic beaten race. So, uh, yeah. So, Airbnb. Uh, all right. They, they, uh, the estimate for uh, revenue was $1.45 billion. They came in at $1.51, so they beat nicely there. Uh, let's see if I can get some more stats. How great is that, man? Like, I, I was not expecting that to happen on the show. How much would it have sucked if it was the opposite, though? <laughs> like, we're here, yeah. we're here, like, talking how excited we are about Airbnb, and it's just, 
We're you're just talking off. about Airbnb and they just get smoked Ooh. by 10 points or something? Yeah, the, the, so their, uh, their expected uh, earnings per share, they were expecting to lose 28 cents. They only lost 3 cents. So a Yeah, huge and by the way, that's hard to assess anyway, Dave. Non-profitable because, like, company. <laughs> How about rev? How about the revenue? Did, did, how much is top the line revenue? Year they year they year? beat. It was one point five one, where one point four five was expected. And okay, they raised so, so the second quarter uh, guidance. It looks like what's so, the revenue yeah. year over year though? Year over year, um, is how much is it up? Year does it, did they say? Um, I like found I was that yet. Uh, it looks like options were expecting a plus or minus nine point one percent move. Uh, I think I just doubled my money, guys. I think I bet you I doubled my came close to doubling my money. I probably made about maybe twenty five k on that options trade. So I'll I'll take I'll take it in a market that has been pretty crushing uh, for all of us. And by all of us, I think pretty much every single person that watches this, including us, I will take every little thing that I can get. Um, Guys, uh, I don't want to talk about, I know people are asking about ApeCoin. I don't want to go into NFTs on this episode other than say that I'm deep, deep, deep into this kind of my thesis on ApeCoin right now. I just started buying more. I sold all my ApeCoin at a gigantic uh, $500,000 profit on Friday and Saturday. Uh, so my ApeCoin trade worked beautifully. Half so you, million you sold profit. going into the other side. Uh, mess. I sold I, I sold 95% of my ApeCoin that I bought at like, I don't know, 12, 13 bucks. I sold it probably at an average cost of 21 and change. I almost doubled my money on a half million dollar trade. Uh, it worked beautifully. Um, and now I am starting to buy ApeCoin based on a dual thesis that I have. Uh, that is, I think, going to play out over the coming weeks, but I don't want to reveal it on today's show because people are going to hate me talking about NFTs today, and I want to do a standalone show for that. Maybe this week. Can we do one this week, Dave? Like maybe, I don't know, later this week on this? Maybe. Maybe. If, or maybe. Comment maybe we'll if do... you want to see uh, an NFT episode on this channel oh, or if you just want to hear oh, it on oh, Chris's oh, own Twitter channel. Space. I'll do a Twitter space like I did last week <laughs> on ApeCoin. We'll do a follow-up on it, okay, guys? Uh, we'll do a Twitter space. Uh, oh, by the way, Dave, Jordan, you didn't know this, but we did a really cool uh, Discord voice chat on Saturday night. It lasted for like two hours. Leon texted me right during the whole like other side NFT land deal. He's like, can you just hop on? I hopped on and it was awesome. We had a bunch of community members in there. And that's why you guys got to join Discord. Uh, Dominate.com forward slash Discord. We do this stuff sporadically. Also, Twitter Spaces, Dumb Money TV. We are going to run Twitter Spaces. We're going to try to run it once a week. We were supposed to do it today, and we did it. My fault. My bad. Uh, we'll try to get that going maybe later this week. Uh, but please follow our Twitter, my Twitter. I'll always retweet it. Dave and Jordan will as well. Uh, all that's on dumbmoney.tv, right? Dumbmoney.tv has all of our Twitter handles, right? Everything. Dumbmoney.tv, yes. Yeah, has everything. Has everything. So, um, yeah, uh, so Airbnb is saying that they see uh, Q2 revenue um, as uh, they, they raised it from 2.03 billion to 2.13 billion. Uh, oh, that's the range. I'm sorry. The, the, no, so the, the estimate, the estimate was, was 1.97. 1. And then the range is 203 to 213. Yeah. yeah so the, the Guys, Q2 range is above the estimate. The Q1 gross booking value was estimated to be 15.9 billion and they came in with 17.2 billion and uh, the nights and experiences booked which is that new feature uh, we were estimated uh, estimate of 98 million and they got 102 million from the Dave, new I am nights more and excited. experiences I'm more excited making 25k on an Airbnb options trade on earnings because it just it gets right back to social art. Then I was about making half a million off of ApeCoin because like I it, I feel like we just it got him beaten down so bad in this equities market. Any little win that we can just yeah. chip away and start to make some of our money back. Well, for, any for you that, that worked out because you played uh, options during the show. Um, basically, Airbnb has is back to where it opened this morning. It's not like it's had this amazing run. It was down 8% during the day and it's popped 8% after hours. But I would but, love for to see that momentum shift change and get Airbnb back up to... Uh, Dave, you know what, Dave? You know what? 
I feel that this market is going to be really cautious allowing with how much they're willing to push a stock up like Airbnb on even on great earnings. And I know a lot of times the market has faded this stuff, but because we had a thesis and we got through this earnings, I'm going to add some Airbnb stock right now after hours too, even at this level. And who knows, I might regret it. I I won't regret it cuz this is a long-term holding for me. But I'm going to add another 100k of Airbnb stock right now. Because I think that this earnings call is probably going to be pretty sweet. And I think people are just not accustomed to really buying up on earnings because every stock gets crushed. And if they don't get crushed, they come down the next day, right? So it's like, and I don't care if Airbnb comes back down the next day at this point. I don't care. Like, like the, the thesis is intact. The thesis and is you intact. Know, and it's, it's a stock I, I be for in, the long term. Yeah. I want I want to be in something where risk is off the table, and I just got all this new information. On any risk is off the table. We have a strong thesis on Airbnb. We know they're probably going to benefit. I think from an inflationary and a recessionary theoretical environment, um, maybe less in inflate in a recessionary environment. Maybe people travel less, so they could get hit there. So, well, I think we've got full employment, right? So as long as people are employed, they're still going to take their yeah. vacations. They're still going to want to go do things. Um, I think I think it's a good trade. I'm up on the day now. My account is up on the day. <laughs> yes, I love this. I, you know how rare that is these days. <laughs> up on it the is day. rare these days. And and by the way, the reason why I was down on the day uh, is because I have this huge hedge. I have like and and my hedge was down because the market. You know, was generally up today, even though, and my Amazon was down. So, yeah, without a hedge, I am up on the day. Yeah. Oh, by the way, me up on the day by zero point two six percent. I am up zero point two six percent today. But I just realized, Dave, my options aren't included in that because they haven't traded yet. They'll trade tomorrow morning. So I'm up significantly now on the day with this options move in the morning. All right. Sorry, guys. I just there's it's been so downbeat for so long. When it comes to equities, I like seeing things work. All right. Uh, so all we right. have the. Uh, so, I'm trying to see when the uh, earnings call is going to be for Airbnb. Here are the results. Uh, it looks like they're going to have their call at uh, 5:30 Eastern. So in about an hour and 15 minutes from now, I'll be listening in on that. Anything else you guys want to add? No, I have not looked at lumber stocks. Someone asked that in the comments in a while, so I can't can't comment. Um, boy, I'm just I'm just I'm just passing through comments, making sure that I, I hate when we don't reply to people. But when that your account chatting. is in all cash, you can't lose. <laughs> <laughs> you can lose. You can, can lose. You, you're guaranteed to lose the inflation rate. But when you're when you're losing double that in. Uh... <laughs> Stocks going down. It's no fun. Okay, I, I want to talk about our next uh, next episode that I want to do, Dave, because I really want to do this episode, and this is the one you're going to be really excited about. Uh, if we have time to do it this week, I'd love to do it this week. Uh, this is a double to triple leverage ETF that we found the study on. We talked about it a little. We teased it during our last episode, and we said we'd yeah. probably do it this week, and I still want to get it done. I think this is going to be a really fun one. It's kind of like I don't know. I'm fascinated by this. I know Dave is fascinated by this. And if there's ever a time to do it, if there was ever a time to do it on the QQQ, I feel like this is the time, man. I don't know. I, I, I might just, I might do it, Dave, but I want to have a, a debate before I place this trade. So, you know, hit so the notifications bell so you don't miss this episode. Give us a thumbs up before you leave, please, guys. I'm going to do it myself here. Triple leverage ETF. Everyone says, don't do it, don't do it. It's a disaster long term. But the study that I read shows that it might not be. And I'm going to try to poke holes in it. So I, I, I hope you can put your poke money poke in there for like a day or two at a time. Isn't that what they say well, in the perspectives? I think you're supposed to use it to try to hedge against other things, right? You're okay. supposed to. Nope. And that's where they nope. say if you're doing that, it's uh, it, you're going to have slippage because it resets itself daily. And so if you're trying to mathematically have a triple leverage, it's not technically truly that. But what this <laughs> article is saying is that over time... Don't give it away! 
You're going to have to subscribe, tune in, and watch. That's what they say. You have to right. subscribe to this channel to find out all about it. It's a very interesting article. We'll, we'll, we'll talk see all about. Uh, tomorrow, Thursday, or Friday. Yes, one of those one of those times. Maybe maybe all three.